I've been playing around with a few different ideas on how to make something like this. I've been playing around. There's an airplane. Just use the last one, Joel, it's fine. What's up everyone? Welcome to Lord Expectations. Thanks for lowering your expectations and hanging out with me here. I do appreciate it. In today's video, we are going to be designing and building a burn chamber for my diesel heater in an attempt to burn waste engine oil. Hopefully not only does it burn waste engine oil, but it does so without creating a huge amount of smoke, a huge amount of stink, or a huge amount of carbon monoxide. This burn chamber is going to be designed to actually be able to clean it without taking it apart. But before we get into that, I'm going to show you guys very briefly my old burn chamber design. If you haven't seen the videos on this, you might want to go check them out. This was a relative success. This burn chamber uses the original burn chamber to preheat a second chamber that then had waste engine oil and air injected. There are a few reasons why we're getting away from the two chamber design, although it worked fairly well and showed quite a bit of promise. It did make quite a bit of stink and also quite a bit of carbon monoxide until we had a bit of an ash buildup, which is strange but true. Secondly, we are ultimately working towards making a self-cleaning heater and this seems to be the next logical step. We are going to be focusing on keeping this heater a lot more like an OEM chamber design because I think the engineers probably had it figured out pretty good when they did this in the first place. We are going to be removing the baffle and replacing it with this cup, which is going to double as a baffle. And we are going to try to keep the volume and basic design of the chamber untouched. The difference being that we are going to have a shaft or a rod attached to this baffle and that shaft is going to exit through the front or the end of the heater and we will be able to rotate the chamber which will clean the chamber out. How is that going to clean the chamber out? I'm glad you asked. We are going to have a fuel nozzle coming in through the back of the chamber and it is going to double as a cleaning device. It is going to protrude into the chamber and actually scrape away the ash because it will be stationary and the chamber will be rotating. Now, all we need to do is make this a reality. I've been playing around with a few different ideas on how to make a cost effective piece like this that will be fairly easily replaceable. Those of you who have been following this series will know that the conditions inside of the burn chamber are pretty harsh and this thing is probably going to get eroded. So what I've come up with is actually trying to make some out of stamped steel. So I'm going to try to make a stamp or yeah, a die and a pressing device so that we can actually make something that is basically this shape out of sheet metal. This is the piece that you guys just saw me making and this is the matching piece that I made off camera. The idea is that a piece of sheet metal will sit in between these and then I will put it in the hydraulic press, push this through and then we will have our part made. Is it actually going to work? Let's find out. I ended up overshooting the dimension a little bit which is very unfortunate because it took a lot of work to get it here. I've got this piece of stainless, it is a stainless steel lid for an old junction box and I'm going to try pressing it in here. This is probably not a great idea. I highly doubt it's just going to push through and make a, and form a piece, but 
All right, I'm curious to see what it looks like in there. Let's let it up a little. All right, it's still forming. It's at about 19 tons and it looks like something's giving. All right, there's 20 tons. <laughs> okay, it popped the center out. Cool. I've kind of got the piece that I wanted. I think it's going to be too big of an outside diameter because I made this tool a little bit too big. Okay, I gotta admit I got a little bit carried away. I got excited about making a new tool and I completely overlooked the fact that we don't even know if this design is going to work. So before we make a tool for making pieces that we don't know if they're going to work or not, how about we actually just make the part that we need? I'm going to take this slug of metal and we are going to pop it in the lathe and turn it into something like this. This is my old fuel nozzle and although it works quite well it is way too large for this application and so we are going to have to make a new one. The way this one works we have air coming in here, we have fuel coming in here and then there are six holes, three pointed towards the camera and three pointed towards me and that's how the fuel and air was injected in through the side of the burn chamber. This one is going to differ because we are going to inject it in through the end of the chamber here. This cover is going to be removed, we're going to grind off one of the fins, drill a hole, tap it, and then we are going to use this high grade GM suspension bolt, turn it into a nozzle, and then we are going to use this stud, thread it into the side of the injector, and then drill this out so that we can inject fuel and air through this. The reason why we're not doing air and fuel separately is because we simply do not have the room. This is a fan motor and this is the burn chamber and they literally sit like this. That might look like a lot of room, but that's only because the fan is not installed. I'm sure that even with this new design, we're probably gonna have some problems. I've decided to use a piece of mild steel instead of a hardened bolt because I realized afterwards that this is going to require some very small holes in it and I'm just going to break off a bunch of drill bits. So I've got it turned down. This diameter is just a little bit smaller than M6 and that's going to allow me to slide this on and thread this section to M6. I got my hole drilled out and now all I need to do is tap it. You guys leave your guesses in the comments as to how many drill bits I'm going to break trying this. I think the last fuel nozzle I made for six holes I broke, no, for three holes I broke eight drill bits. Helps if you put it in forward. Whoa, there's one hole. All right, four holes, not a single broken drill bit. Oh, but my battery did fall out. I built this fuel pipe off camera. It is basically just a M6 stud that had an M8 on the other end. I turned this down to fit the air and fuel line and I cut the end off short so that it will thread into here. And now we have our fuel nozzle that will thread into the back of the chamber and this piece that will actually accept the fuel and air or the waste oil and air.
think that was my final cut. Yeah, that'll work. I was planning on cutting it out to this size and then using one of those inserts, but I only have one extra of those and I would have to modify it and to cut it shorter. So I think I'm just gonna fill this in with tack tape. It'll seal better anyway. To my regular viewers, it probably appears that I've been using my Viva Rotary Flex Shaft tool way more frequently. The truth is I've been using it just about as much as I've used it in the past. The exception being that I'm adding clips to my videos because these are now back in stock in US and in Canada. If you're interested in one of these or in a diesel heater, I will have some affiliate links as well as a discount code in the description below. Feel free to go check that out. This last fuel pipe, unfortunately, was way too big. It was hitting the fan, and so I've had to come up with something else. I've got a brass connector from a jet ski electric solenoid, and I've cut a bunch of it off. It was threaded for M6 in the end, and it has M6 uh, protruding from the end. So the fuel line is stuck into an M6 thread, and I've soldered it in there. I'm hoping that the solder holds. I think that it will, but uh, we're going to try it like this and see what happens. Due to space limitations, I've had to resort to a whole bunch of other modifications and I'm not even sure if these modifications will work but basically where I'm at is the fan isn't rubbing without the fuel line on I've had to reduce the brass piece down to this tiny little piece and I can't put the fuel line I basically have to solder the fuel line into this fitting once it's in the heater because I can't thread it in afterwards. So this fuel line is going to hit the fan so I'm going to have to bend that down but I need to get that all whoop, I need to get that all taken care of before I solder the fuel line in place because as you can see right now the fan is actually hitting the fuel line the problem is too i don't even know where it's hitting what i'm going to do i got some uh, plasticine i've got some putty basically i'm going to put it on the fuel line and see where it's hitting and by how much that is where the fan is hitting the fuel line so i need to bend it down in that area how am i going to bend this fuel line when I first started this, I was all worried about trying not to make too much restriction of flow and making it come out in an aesthetically pleasing spot. Now I'm just, just trying to make it happen. All right, let's try a piece of wood. Oh, that might have worked. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not hitting even without a gasket. So now I've got some soldering paste that actually has lead in it, apparently, and that helps it tin. What's going to end up happening now is I'm going to end up soldering the friggin' hole shut or something, the holes. It's locked in place, but I don't know if it's sealed. And the only way to know if it's really sealed is to run it. I think we're going to run it like this and hope it doesn't leak. Now, on to trying to make the piece that will rotate this thing. This is a quick intermission to say a huge thanks to Scott Clancy for being my latest Patreon member. Thank you, Scott. I do appreciate it. 
If you guys are interested in supporting me on Patreon, there is a link in the description below, as well as links to some of the products that I've been using in this video. Once again, thank you very much, Scott. I do appreciate it. So what I am going to do, I'm gonna use this bar of metal and it's going to be attached to one side of the cup. I'm gonna weld it on one side of the cup. And that's gonna hurt me because it looks so pretty now and after I weld it, it's not gonna look pretty anymore. Hopefully it doesn't warp and it still turns. Yes, I am aware you can buy tools to do this and I do have machining tools so I could make a tool to do this but I'm not going to. Leave your guesses in the comments below as to what's going to happen. I think once it starts bending it will want to self-center. The tricky bit is going to be to get it to start. Okay, I think we've got it. <laughs> I think once it starts bending, yeah, as suspected, once it starts bending, it kind of, kind of self-stabilizes. Okay, let's take it out and check it, I guess. pretty close to 90. That actually worked. I would not recommend doing that, but it did work. That should be enough. This beaver welding wire works awesome. I chipped off the weld spatter with a 7-in-1 or 3-in-1 or whatever they call them and then hit it with a wire brush, this little thing here, and that's how it looks. That will do just fine. Oh, there's one little spatter left right here. That's a stubborn one. All right, let's see if it still fits in the chamber. That's not the right chamber. This is, I was worried that it would warp. Oh, it fits, it fits and it rotates even. Nice. I was trying to figure out how I was going to weld this to the rotating piece accurately enough so that it would actually work. And then I figured out what I'm actually going to do. I thought I had it all figured out as far as how I was going to drive that cup piece, but I put it together and it didn't work out very well. It was very sticky. So I definitely couldn't turn it by hand. I couldn't even turn it by drill most of the time. So this is what I've come up with after trying to straighten it in a couple of different ways. I ended up setting it in, up in the lathe and trying to true it with a dial indicator, and then I decided to cut it back apart and do this. I've got the part that will go through the exchanger in the chuck of the, in the drill chuck, and I've got the other piece held in the lathe chuck, and I'm going to weld it here while it is in the chuck. This should do the trick. I now have it welded up, I haven't checked it yet. Let's see how true it is. Hmm, not as true as I was hoping it would be. I guess it just moved when it cooled off. Let's see how many attempts it takes for me to film putting this thing together. I'll start by putting this nut in, although this probably should be step number two. to put this piece is already inserted into the chamber and we're now going to insert this in through that bushing or whatever you want to call it 
just like this. I've already got the fuel and air injection line inserted here and I'm hoping that it still clears the fan. It did the last time I checked. I had a new one of these that I wanted to use but I'm going to need to use some sealant for that line anyway so maybe we'll just use sealant on that too. I'm going to try running this with the end open at least at first and hope that it works. I don't know that this has a mesh in there. Let's check to make sure there's a mesh. There is not a mesh. Good thing I checked. Alright, let's see if anything rubs now that we have the fan tightened in place. Nice, no rubbage. Now we need to put on the heat sensor. We also need to plug the hole here. Now we just need to install the ECU. And I think we're ready to mount it in the case. I'm gonna need to seal up around this hole. Otherwise the combustion air will just leak out. Alright, I'm going to wrap it around the fuel line and push it into place on the housing. That will be sealed up better than the OEM one, guaranteed. Into the case you go. Alright, I'm also going to block up this hole with just a piece of duct tape. And I'm also going to plug this up with some duct tape or something. Just so that the air doesn't escape. Oh no, I've been burning waste engine oil and there's ash inside my heater. What should I do? Take it apart? Nah. Cleaned. There you have it, this heater is assembled and ready for testing. I just finished up my vegetable oil test and inspected the heater. So that video will be out soon and I will be hooking this up this evening and firing it up for the very first time. Assuming that it actually works at all, I expect this to be a very long term test. So I will come back periodically and kind of update you guys and yeah, eventually I will do a video letting you guys know how much of a success or failure this actually was. I suspect that it is going to work quite well because the design basically mimics the design of an OEM chamber. And I assume it's probably going to work quite well until we have problems with the erosion of the shaft or something like that. Maybe the erosion of the cup. I might take it apart periodically to take a look inside and see what's actually happening to see if the rotating of the dish or cup, whatever you want to call it, baffle, uh, to see if that is actually cleaning off. One thing that I am concerned about, and I might actually either shut it down to clean it or basically turn the heat way down to the lowest setting for a few minutes, I'm concerned that the fuel nozzle will be red hot or too hot. Probably won't be because there's going to be air and fuel going through it, but I'm concerned that that might actually break off if the ash builds up to any substantial amount. So I'm gonna to try to turn it frequently, but 
Eventually, as the test goes on, that will probably turn in from every hour to every four hours to whenever I get around to it. So eventually that piece could break. I am thinking what I probably should have done and what I might do for a future version, or if this one has issues, is actually build a separate piece so that the fuel nozzle isn't actually what is doing the uh, smashing of the carbon. Uh, I did show you guys this thing hooked up to a drill and whizzing around very fast. That's very likely not how I'm going to clean it. I will probably turn it fairly gently, especially uh, when it starts turning so I don't just snap the fuel nozzle off. But uh, yeah, I may end up using the drill. If I do, I'll probably use it on the slower speed. But eventually again, as the heater goes on, as the test progresses, uh, it will probably end up on full speed. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Anyway, that is gonna do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.